What to expect from Joel Edmondson. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holney. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON NHL for $20 off your first purchase. So, in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about Joel Edmondson and what kind of player are the Capitals getting? As we know, the Capitals acquired Joel Edmondson at free agency this last summer because there were some deficiencies on the blue line. What will he help remedy? We'll talk about that in the show. We'll talk about what to expect from Joel Edmondson. I mean, we've heard a lot about him. We know historically that he played on the Habs and was a pretty good player, but being a little bit prone to being injured, we'll talk about that in the show. And then we will talk about his injury concerns. Uh, There is some baggage that is concerned with Joel Edmondson and some risk, uh, suffices to say. So we'll talk about that. But just to get it going here, we will break down what kind of player are the Capitals ultimately getting in Joel Edmondson? Uh, Listen, the team right now, the blue line in particular, is quite a bit different uh, than when the Capitals acquired him last summer during free agency. Uh, There were a lot of issues last year on the blue line. Uh, Injury was one of those things as far as John Carlson is concerned, but they didn't have a guy that was kind of um, an intimidator, uh, a guy that could clear uh, the paint in front of the goalie, that kind of thing. So they were looking for a deterrent, if you will. And I think that they ultimately have that in some someone like Joel Edmondson. And one of the good things about him as well is that uh, the Habs retained 50% of his salary. So some bargain shopping, that is for sure. Edmondson, who was originally drafted by St. Louis in the second round, 46th overall in 2011, was a member of the Blues 2019 Stanley Cup championship team appearing in 22 of the team's 26 playoff contests. So he does have experience On the big stage, he has experience in the playoffs. All of those things are good things, as we know that there are some younger players on the blue line as well. If we take a look at Alexia, Johansson, uh, Hardy Hamanaktel, that uh, an experienced guy back there could be just what the doctor ordered. I know that this is the second oldest team roster-wise, but it still helps to have guys that have been there and done that. And what is one of the biggest attributes or one of the biggest things to like about Joel Edmondson is his size. He is six foot five, two hundred and twenty-one pounds. I'm six foot five and two hundred and twenty pounds, but I'm definitely not in the same shape that he is. That's for sure. But he is a huge dude out there on the ice and he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. What is one of the things that Tom Wilson said is for a big guy, he can close space in a hurry and he can clear the puck away from the front of the net. All positive things. Uh, 104 points, 28 goals, 76 assists in 477 career games with Montreal, the Carolina Hurricanes, and the St. Louis Blues. Edmondson was originally drafted by St. Louis in the second round 46th overall, like I said, in the 2011 draft. Um, So, you know, he did play rather well up uh, for the Habs, the Canadians, but, you know, injuries uh, are something that have kind of derailed his career. And we'll talk about those uh, issues a little bit more in depth later in the show. But his scouting report, even from the earliest days, uh, you know, they made note of his size at the time. It says, has the size six foot four in strength that coaches love. 
love in a shutdown defenseman is a physical force in his own zone who is at his best when he keeps things single and does not try to do more than he is capable of, will never be an offensive force, but is an, an acceptable puck mover who can play 20 plus minutes per game and is a good match for an offensive partner. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see where he slots in. One of the things that um, I've spoke about on the show, and if you're an everyday, you know that, is who comes out of the lineup to make it so Joel Edmondson can fit into the lineup. Uh, there are only so many spots. As we know, there's Lucas Johansson and Alexiev and Hardy Haman Octel. One of those players is going to be the odd man out. So that is a tough thing uh, for these players that have put in the time thus far and really kind of helped the Capitals go in the direction that they need to go. But his long range potential back then was said to be a big shutdown defenseman. So on paper, he appears to be a no brainer for the Capitals and the fact that they were able to get him from the Habs and they retained 50% of his salary. That was a huge thing. And what did the Capitals have to give up? They acquired Joel Edmonton from the Canadians for a third round pick, originally acquired from Minnesota, and a seventh round pick in the 2024 NHL draft. Montreal, like I said, retains 50% of his salary. So there is a lot to like about his game. Uh, the physicality is ultimately uh, what I like about him. And, and that's one of the things that if you listen to the show, I like players that bring a physical game. That is why I like Wilson. That is why I like a lot of Malenstein on this team. That is why um, I liked McElrath when he was playing as well. Uh, a physicality is a good brand of hockey that I appreciate uh, because it is a deterrent. So if you have a, you know, a tough guy on the opposing team, well, the tough guy, the physical guy uh, can, can say, hey, you're not going to do that to our younger guys. And it's not necessarily just about dropping the gloves. It's the guys that are finishing the checks in the corner and also the subtle art of chirping. Yes, Garnet Hathaway was really good at that. And Tom Wilson is as well. But those physical players are key to this team and um, you know there has been a little bit of lack of physicality uh, we saw a fight for the first time in quite some time for the Capitals with Dylan McElrath uh, a guy that you know is a huge dude and uh, uh, that is what has said you know the opposing player said wow that guy's tough um, so I think that you know maybe he underestimated his opponent but in any event it is going to be interesting to see what kind of brand of hockey Joel Edmondson brings to this team. But as of right now, as I record this, he is expected to be joining the Caps for the first time Saturday against the Blue Jackets. Yes, I know he got involved in the preseason and the camps and all that, but this is going to be his first game of the regular season in a capital sweater. It is going to be exciting to see what he brings. Uh, again, it's going to be interesting to see what player comes out to accommodate him, but I am most excited to see about what he brings to this team. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about what should the Capitals expect from Joel Edmondson. We'll talk about that straight ahead. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets, and that's why I love Game Time. If my favorite band comes to town or my favorite uh, sports team is playing, I know I can go to Game Time and get the tickets that I need. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for your 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Capitals acquired Joel Edmondson during free agency this past summer. Again, a lot of uh, you know people that followed the team, a lot of the fans were hoping for some bigger moves, some sexier name, if you will. And the Capitals acquired Max Pacioretty and Joel Edmondson. Um, and those were the biggest names or some smaller moves as well, including Matthew Phillips. But uh, that is what they got. And, you know, at first, uh, about when we were taking a look at Joel Edmondson, uh, I had heard the name just in passing from following the NHL. But when I looked into him a little bit more in depth, I really like his game. I think he's going to fit in well. And from a lot of the other players that have already played with him in camps and preseason scrimmages, they really seem to like him. So that is key. But what ultimately can we expect from him? The 30-year-old gives the Caps much needed depth on their blue line after trading away Dmitry Orloff on the deadline last season. Uh, the depth is a big thing, you know, and that was a piece there from earlier, but they do have a little bit more depth, but the depth that they have is the players from down in Hershey, see Alexia, see Lucas Johansson and Hardy Haman Octel. Um, that is the depth. So it's not quite the same. The landscape for the team is not exactly the same as when they first acquired him. So why did Joel Edmondson, why did he want to come to the Capitals? Surely there were other offers out there. He was looking for a fresh start after battling through a couple of injury plagued seasons. Yes, make no mistake about it. There is some risk factor with Joel Edmondson as he has been plagued with injuries. And I'll talk about those a little bit more in depth in the last segment here, but I think it's a risk, you know, and a lot of times things in life are a risk and the caps were against it cap wise still kind of are, I guess a little bit more. Now there's a little bit more leeway with uh, uh, Nick Backstrom going on LTIR, but that is why they made that acquisition. And what did GM Brian McClellan have to say? He says, when we were going through the free agent market and the trade market, he's an element that we wanted to add to our lineup. Physical, net front presence. He's a good leader, has some good size. We looked at other free agents and what the cost was and decided to spend picks on it. Plus, the salary retention was appealing to us because we could afford that. So good on Brian McClellan. I uh, do it with some value shopping there. I know we had to part with some draft capital, but we had, you know, a decent amount of draft capital and we were looking for an experienced blue liner. And I think to a certain extent that the blue line now is playing better than we had hoped for. I know it was not so great to start the season, but has been taking steps forward. Um, so all positive signs, but Edmondson, he ultimately knows what's expected from him. They know he knows who he is. He knows that he's this tough guy out there, that he's this intimidator. He's the guy that's supposed to bring the physicality. The Caps had a hard time clearing the blue paint in front of him, the netminders. That's why they got him. A great deterrent with a long reach and a physical reputation. Check, 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 check. I love it. I mean, I guess I'm going to love it even more when I see it in real game time situations. But, you know, if you wrote that on a piece of paper and showed it to me and go, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead with that. Let's go ahead with Joel Edmondson. That's the strong point of my game, says Edmondson, who won the Stanley Cup with the Blues in 2019 and helped the Montreal Canadiens to the final in 2021, just being solid in front of the goalie and just making sure he can see the puck. I love to use my stick to my defense with some cross checks and make the opposition's night miserable. Isn't that quite a statement? And uh, if he can do half of that, or a fraction of that, shall we say, I really love his game. So I'm excited to see what he's going to bring to this team. We already kind of know what he's going to bring to this team. And if you are not familiar with Joel Edmondson, like a lot of other people aren't, he's not this marquee name around the NHL. That is what you're going to expect from Joel Edmondson 
being six foot five, 220 some pounds is a physical brand of hockey. A guy that is not afraid to mix it up. He's not afraid to, to clear the puck away from the net. Those kind of things, uh, certain things that were deficient on this team last year. And they know what they're getting. And Joel Edmondson knows what's expected of him is that physical brand of hockey. And it's interesting. That is just kind of the prototypical Capitals uh, a big player. You know, they like that historically. You know, take a look at Erskine and Wilson, and they've just always liked the bigger guys that bring the physical presence, at least have, you know, some of that. Some teams around the NHL have no physical presence, and those teams suffer the most because you take a team like the Capitals that have a decent amount of physicality now, that, you know, makes it that much more difficult. But I am excited to see uh, what he's going to bring, everything that you know has been said in pregame skates, and, and you know, I guess we'll find out more on Friday. Is if is he going to be, and who is going to be in the practice on Friday? Oftentimes, you can read into that. Okay, that's going to be who that who's going to be in the lineup. But uh, it is going to be exciting to see, you know, what what he brings. And the unfortunate thing for me, like I've talked about, is that he's going to have to earn it. It's not set in stone that he's going to play on Saturday, but it's been rumored that he will, um, you know, and it's, I'm kind of of the belief that he should have to earn his stripes. He should have to earn his ice time. Just like a lot of the other younger guys, you take a look at Octel, you look at Alexiev and you look at Johansson, those players have had to cycle through and earn it. You know, if they wanted to get the sweater on any given night, they, they didn't just mail it in. They really had to bring it. Um, so is Joel Edmondson going to do that? Uh, that is the question. And, you know, if he's not going to do it, then I don't think that we need to play him just because, you know, we paid money for him. We want the best player for each position playing out on the ice. And I have no reason to believe that he's not going to be as advertised. I'm just saying in the event of uh, there should be a bit of a contingency plan there. All right. So coming up here after the break, we will talk about. The, you know, the negativity, the injury concerns, how concerned should we be about his, you know, injury history? I'll talk about that coming up. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And let me tell you something, guys. Oftentimes, I'm watching a sporting event, and I'm like, I don't really care about this. But then I open up the FanDuel app, and I put a little bit of money on the game. Let me tell you, it makes watching the games that much more exciting. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Joel Edmondson, in this episode, I've talked about, I've done a profile. I said, you know, what to expect from him? What are the pros? You know, what kind of player has he been historically? But now I must, I must flip the coin over to the other side and talk about the injury concerns because injuries are nothing foreign to Joel Edmondson as he has faced a decent amount of them. As we know, he's not playing uh, on the team right now, has not played a single regular season game for the Capitals thus far. He has played uh, just 85 games in the last two seasons combined. And before this injury, he suffered from lower back issues. Uh, so those are causes of concern. I know Joel Edmondson uh, missed initially was said to miss four to six weeks uh, after fracturing his hand in a training camp scrimmage. Uh, the 30-year-old defenseman had surgery to stabilize the fracture, and everything seems to be going on the up and up. So you factor in the lower back issues, um, which is something that is, you know, for me, a bit more of a cause of concern than the fracture of his hand. Because, you know, you can just, you know, put a cast on it or maybe you had to have surgery on it and you're good to go. But the lower back issues, those issues are something that can kind of linger for a long time. If you've ever known anyone that's had back issues, 
sometimes those are things that last for many years. But, you know, just taking a look at him, that is what we know about the injuries. We know about the lower back issues, and we signed him knowing that. Ultimately, that is why we got him at an affordable rate. The questionable thing for me, however, is that Montreal was willing to retain some of his salary. I know they got draft picks in return. Uh, I guess one, you know, one of those shot up to Minnesota. But if you take a look at it, uh, you know, the Montreal Canadiens, they knew uh, what kind of player uh, that they had, and they were willing to part with him. And that kind of is a bit questionable for me. Uh, why they were able to do it. You know, if you take a look at the the flip there and what Montreal, Montreal for a third round pick originally acquired from Minnesota and a seventh round pick in the 2024 NHL draft. So that is that was the take on it. And they retained 50% of the salary. So um, I think that, you know, uh, he just didn't fit into the Montreal Canadiens master plans. And, you know, if we take a look at the blue line last year, you can kind of see why the decision was made, why it was. At the time, John Carlson, and there might have been one other player, was the only player under contract for the Capitals on the blue line. You know, you took a look at the at the time, Jensen and Trevor Van Riemsdyk and Martin Faravari. Faravari was an RFA, so same thing goes for Alexiev, but there was a lot of questions and those questions were compounded and made a little bit worse because we knew that the blue line was an area of concern. So the Capitals were willing to overlook the injury concerns of Joel Edmondson and say, hey, you know, we understand there's a risk, but, you know, we got him pretty cheap. You know, we spent some draft picks and they're retaining 50% of his salary. Let's roll the dice and see what we got. And I guess we will ultimately see what we have potentially Saturday night. As Capitals fans, you should be excited about this. In tomorrow's show, I will talk about Max Pacioretty and what we can expect from him. Listen, these are players that have been on this team, at least contractually, for quite some time. I want to see what they have. I want to see what the shiny new toy that the Capitals got has. I guess not so new, but new blood anyway. Um, so, and it's going to be interesting to see how they mesh with the Capitals. Um, but, you know, one of the things that is positive for me is that I heard Connor McMichael speak positively about him. I heard Tom Wilson speak positively about Joel Edmondson, that, you know, at least on that, that he seems like a likable guy. He seems like he wanted to come here. He didn't come here under protest or, or anything like that. So that is already kind of setting your foot off the right way that you actually want to go to the team. Uh, that was pursuing you, but is an exciting thing for me to think about uh, who, what kind of player he's ultimately going to be and what kind of upgrade uh, should the Capitals expect? Um, you know, and that's an interesting thing that oftentimes when these players get to be a little bit older, you get it when they're a little bit dinged up. That's just part and parcel of being a player in the National Hockey League. So sometimes that's what you get. But what is the advantage of, of getting these players that are a little dinged up, a little nicked up to use a term? Um, is that you get them cheaper. Because let's face it, I, if Joel Edmondson was in perfect physical condition, I think that the Capitals wouldn't have been able to afford him. I know they wouldn't have. So that is ultimately what is behind uh, them getting him on the cheap, relatively speaking, some draft picks. And uh, that's how they acquired him. You know, what? one of the things that I've always said is I don't want to make a trade for trade's sake. And I'm glad they didn't part with, a you know, a top prospect like a McMichael or LaPierre or someone like that. Um, so that is a good situation for the Capitals to be in that they gave up little to acquire him. And he has a huge upside, potentially a physical guy, a guy that can clear the net plus, 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 plus as Capitals fans, you should be super excited about this new acquisition and ultimately being able to see him in real guy game time situation is most exciting for me. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. Oh, yes, there are quite a few Capitals podcasts out there, but none of them are year-round. Five days a week. There's like two months there that we're down to three weeks or three days a week. But other than that, it's full Caps coverage all year round. And it is Capitals coverage. If you take a look on the screen there, if you're watching this on YouTube or on your podcatcher, it says Capitals locked on Capitals because that is what I do. That is what locked on does is we talk about the team that you love. I'm not going to talk to you about stories about my, what I do in my personal time. Uh, relatively speaking, I, I've done that only a couple times uh, when it's been a major life event, but nine times out of 10, 
I keep this about Capitals hockey because that is what you, the fans, want to hear. You don't want to hear about my weekend. You don't want to hear about me doing this, that, or the other thing. You want to hear about the Capitals, and you have come to the right place year-round. And I want to thank all of you that listen each and every day and watch this on YouTube you are what makes this show successful, and I have you to thank. Listen, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And when you're done here, head on over to the new national streaming channel. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7. That is pretty cool. The top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. I think you will love it. Once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.